Perth tonight with Chris Ilsley on 882 6PR, the voice of Perth. Here's something rather interesting. We hear lots of talk about people who want to do development, such as high-rise apartments and that sort of stuff, and you know, lots of people jumping up and down about it and complaining about it. We don't want that in our neighbourhood, and some people say, oh, those are going to be the slums of tomorrow. I mean, we've all heard the arguments over the years, but there's never really been anyone who's jumped up and said, hey, we are actually advocates for this kind of living. In fact, Samantha Reese this week launched the WA Apartment Advocacy, otherwise known as WA. That's what I'm going to call it. Uh, w A, by the way. Doesn't that works out, doesn't it? WA. You can always remember that. Uh, to generate open discussion about the roles of apartments within the state. Now, of course, the reason why they've been motivated, not too surprisingly, is by NIMBYs, not in my backyard. Nobody wants apartments in their backyard for all the reasons we talked about earlier. And, of course, when councils are making decisions, what happens is people who are really against this for reasons real or imagined are the ones who petition the councils, they lobby councillors, turn up at council meetings. In fact, it's probably not unfair to say that this very scenario in some councils probably motivated some councillors to become councillors in the first place. We're joined on the program by apartment dweller Robert Summerton. Tell you a little bit about Robert. He and his family live in an apartment and Robert says they do it by choice and it's not a bad way to live. G'day, Robert. G'day, Chris. How are you going? Um, have I pretty well summed it up? You reckon it's okay living in apartments? Uh, yes, I'm really surprised at uh, how pleasurable it is. It's, uh, it's a far cry from living in the suburbs in a normal home, uh, especially when I was living there for 20 years in the one house. So when my wife encouraged me to move to an apartment living, um, I, I found it uh, an exciting change. Were you a bit surprised? At the time when she first suggested, did you look at her a bit strange and say, listen, you haven't started taking drugs, have you, darling? Well, I thought it was a more midlife crisis thing, to be quite honest, but um, she was after a change, I suppose, and she wanted to be near water and things like that. So uh, uh, Sue introduced me to apartments that were being built, and uh, uh, they weren't being built at the time, they were being uh, sold, but then she had a, an opportunity to show me another apartment in, in where I am now, and uh, and I was quite excited and surprised. I'd never seen anything like it before. It was my... Uh, I had a different opinion about apartments. I probably thought of them as more as flats, and they're not like that at all. Well, I was going to say, you and I grew up in the era when, when you moved out of your folks' place and you moved in with a couple of your mates, you got, quote, end quote, a flat. And when you when you got your first house, well, for most of us, that was usually when we moved out with our girlfriend for the first time, you know? Yeah, well, that's right. Well, in fact, the first place I moved into was a 16-man barracks. But anyway, that was another thing. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, well, in fact, I did live in the flat when I was a, a younger a lad with my parents, and uh, and that's what probably put me off the idea of apartments because I thought apartments were like flats, but they're not. See, that's the interesting thing because for people, and I've got to say I'm one of these people as well, I've often thought that apartment was just the real estate world's fancy way of saying flat, but if you said apartment rather than flat, you could charge more for exactly the same thing. You're saying, no, no, that's not how it is. No, that's right. It's not like that at all, but that, I had the same opinion as well, I must admit. So uh, until my wife uh, took me uh, kicking and dragging and having a look at these places, uh, I was quite surprised, very much so. It was interesting, um, the person, of course, who started the WA Apartment Advocacy, I'm still going to call that WA, because I reckon that works. Uh, one, one of the things uh, that was spoken of, that Samantha Reese spoken of, she's talked about councils changing town planning schemes, rejecting apartment projects based on what she called 0.0006% of the population, and decided that something had to change. Certainly, when people talk about these kind of developments, no question about it, People become NIMBYs. They don't want these near me. People will petition their councils. But what you hear from are the people who oppose that kind of development. And there is this automatic assumption that they're speaking for everybody. And I guess what the um, WA is actually talking about is, well, you know something, they're not necessarily speaking for everybody. And those who have no objection are not necessarily liable to stand up and vocally say, we have no objection, go right ahead. Well, that, that's right. Um, look, I really believe that Perth's becoming a more uh, mature city now, and uh, and I think these sort of uh, living arrangements as apartments, especially close to uh, transport corridors uh, and close to the city, uh, I think will will do the city uh, 
justice, to be quite honest. Is, is it part of an education process, do you think, that people have to... Because you and I are having this discussion now, and interestingly, uh, you're saying that you and I had ideas about apartments that aligned, and it yeah. wasn't until you became an apartment dweller that that became an issue. Now, now, what about something else? I can imagine somebody saying, yeah, well, OK, um, I, I like to have a pet. I like to have my dog. Can't do that in an apartment. Well, you can. Uh, a lot of apartments do cater for uh, having pets, in fact, most of the, uh, the residents in my tower uh, do have dogs and, and cats and, uh, and they take full advantage of uh, the birds with peninsula uh, to exercise these animals and so forth. But, and they don't seem to be any problem whatsoever. Now, you talk about being in a, an apartment where you've got a river view on the whole bit. Could you afford to have bought a similar size house with a similar sized view in a similar area? Uh, hmm. Well, not the reason why I'm asking that is I kind of imagine, are you able to buy apartments in some of those more what we might call upmarket areas uh, at prices that would be far less than what you would pay for a similar size dwelling on a freestanding block? No, not necessarily. No, I don't believe that's so. Uh, I mean, if you're, if you're talking about something upmarket, so, uh, then you're going to have to pay a, a higher price for it, especially if the area attracts views and things like that. What's good about apartments is you can fit more people on that smaller footprint, and at the same time, everybody's enjoying a lot of views. Where if you have a house on a on the same size footprint, you've got very few people enjoying that same thing. Yeah, and of course, bearing in mind that the one thing we've been told time and time again is the expense in buying a place here in WA is being driven by the price of the dirt upon which we sit the dwelling, not the dwelling itself. One can imagine that if you're putting more on less in terms of the amount of dirt that you're occupying, so you're putting more on less dirt, then per unit each place has got to get cheaper and, and so therefore some would argue more affordable. But of course the issue stems from the fact that in many areas, and of course many of the desirable areas to place these are places with views along the coast, along the riverfront, they seem to be the areas that are most adverse to these sort of developments. You talk about changing public attitudes to them. How easy will changing public attitudes be? even if you can argue and even if you can demonstrate that people's impressions and, and what people think to be the case is not necessarily the case? Well, I, Perth's got a, a background of uh, a lot of low-rise uh, living anyway. When I first came here in the 80s, I noticed there was a big difference between how people lived here as to how people lived in Melbourne and Sydney. Um, and I probably was more used to high-rise living in Melbourne, where I'm from, uh, but that was more the case of flats. Uh, Melbourne and Sydney have really embraced apartments and it's just quite the norm in those cities. They're very cosmopolitan, they're very dynamic and I think that will come in time more with Perth too because Perth is slowly changing. It's becoming a more international city uh, and I think it needs that sort of living, especially if you're attracting uh, people from overseas who are used to, who are used to living like this uh, it's a, it's a, a great idea because they can lock up and leave and that's the sort of thing I'm looking at too for when I travel with my wife that we can lock up and leave and know that everything is quite safe Are there any surprises for people? I mean put, putting aside anything else that you might talk about like people saying well is this a desirable way to live are there any other surprises for people that they may not ordinarily have known? Well um I've noticed, in particular, the sense of community uh, within the towers that I'm, I live here now, uh, where I was in the suburbs before, I would only see my neighbours very occasionally. They would drive home, open the garage door, close the garage door and go straight in the house. They weren't community-minded, but um, I found the community-mindedness of these people where I'm living now is far greater than that uh, was where I was living before. So I think that's quite a, a wonderful thing. How long do you think it'll take to change the minds of people? Uh, it, it may be 10 to 15 years. Um, if it comes in slowly and progressively, and if the apartments are done thoughtfully, uh, and it will slowly win people over, I'd say. Cool. Mate, it's been a pleasure. Thanks very much for your time.